last week we we uh, created the developer's account and we played with uploading files to it. If, uh, if it was ready to be published, you would hit the publish button and your app would be available in probably around 24 hours at the most. Uh, Amazon does take a cursory look at your app and approve it. Relatively easy. It's a lot harder to get approved on the, in the iOS store. Uh, if you go with Google Play, that one is the opposite, where that one's pretty much also anyone, all, everyone's welcome. So Amazon's kind of in the middle, that it does check your app a bit, but it's pretty lenient. And then uh, iOS is pretty strict, and Android is, is pretty loose, Android store. So if we were going to upload this as our, as our finished version of our project, we need to do a little bit of cleanup, uh, a final kind of check on things. Let's make sure your files are saved, and let's close all the files for the moment. When you say cleanup, because when you, when you build the application, it's packaging the script. So by packaging the build, does it by default do a cleanup, or is it taking this code and we have too many lines and comments and that kind of stuff that still is embedded in that? Yes, it is. It is pretty efficient in that it will create a nice compact file, but what I mean is, notice in the project folder, clean up here, we have this pouch file, for example, that we had temporarily, so things like that. So I would clean up stray files that have no purpose. As for my comments and extra spacing and all that, I would leave that alone because it'll compress it pretty easily <coughs> since it's text. As for a cleanup, let's first take a look around the actual file structure to see if it's efficient enough. Go ahead and go to your project folder and open the WW folder. And um, one of the things definitely, this is the practice file for Pouch that we were working with. We had taken all of the code inside of it and put it into the right element. So that's redundant. And it's not that big. It's um, 11k, but 11k back in the day was a lot. So let's cut that out there and delete it. You, you, well, before we make these big changes, you want to make sure you have some kind of copy of the original just in case things go awry. So actually, I will take a quick moment <clears throat> to copy my whole WW folder somewhere else. I'm going to copy it as a backup. This is obviously a very basic backup. So if I make any of these big file changes and such, I'll have that WW folder that I can just drop back in. Today's date. That's optional, but you shouldn't think of backups as optional. So I made a copy of my WW folder. I put it off somewhere. I'm going to delete the pouch practice file. If you got your map to work, you want to obviously have your map feature. If you didn't get it to work, I would delete the map file, and then we have to delete the link in the index file that points to it. We could use various other Cordova uh, device checking features Although the problem is not a network connection, is that do you have your API key? So did any of you try to get that API key over these last few days? Nope, that's okay. So we're, if, you're, if you were going to publish this for real, I don't want that map file there anymore. I'm going to make a note, and we need to remember to go into our index file to remove that. So we'll be back on that. Uh, there's my custom, custom CSS, custom colors, jQuery. All that jQuery stuff we want to keep, of course. Icon, that was there sort of just for testing to send an email. What was that one for? We that one was that one was when we um, when we did the tweet to show a picture of the of the app. So we can keep that one. Index file, of course, leave that alone. I've got a folder for my fonts. What's in there? Just the fonts, okay. Uh, for a few of you, what I saw in your folder of your custom font, 
you also had other, other stuff hanging around there, such as an extra index.html, <coughs> which was just the demo to how the font looked like. You don't need that. Save a few bytes, a few kilobytes. All I needed in my font folder was the font <coughs> and the font CSS file to activate it. Anything besides that, most likely you don't need. The confusing part is that your particular fonts may have the WAF version, which you want to keep, the TTF version, which you want to keep, the OTF version, the SVG version. So if, if yours looks something like this, that you've got these versions too, These are font files, TTF, OTF, SVG, and WAF. Those are fonts. If you have things besides that, like the index file, and I think there's another one, there's another folder in there for the index file to work, you don't need that. Well, the backup folder is a backup. In case I have a problem with what I'm doing here, I can bring my backup back and, and, and do it again. This is my custom font. I added the custom font of Airstream, and those are the files required for my custom font to work. Images folder. This would uh, require me checking that all of the graphics in here I actually used in my project. I think we did. I wouldn't worry about it too much if we didn't. I think in the in the social sharing is where we used this graphic. Yes, yeah, so all of these graphics I need. Obviously, I need these icons. In the JS folder, it's just the index file. So this is one aspect of cleanup, literally taking out files and content you don't need, so that when we do a build, it um, only has to build the necessary things. If we had a bunch of graphics that we never use hanging around, those things would, would, would be kept, compressed somewhat, but still taking up space in our app. I took out the map. Therefore, I need to go back to the index file and make sure that it doesn't have a button anymore to go to the map. I took out the map. If you're keeping the map, obviously don't take out the link to the map. So I'm going to go back to edit the index file. In my index.html file, line 207 is where I have the link to the map, which I took out, so I'll remove that link. You, you could definitely. You can comment it out and it won't work anymore, uh, although th that's the issue that sometimes this is how things get hacked. Your app could be decompiled. Someone could have the tools to take the finished APK and extract everything inside of it. And then someone's going to see, why is this commented out? And if it was really important, that might be a way to do some you know, uh, nefarious things to figure out things that could be detrimental. So the other aspect of, of the cleanup is, is about that. Are there 
is there code, is there stuff inside of the app that is commented out that I never used, code that's just hanging around. I think we were pretty efficient this semester. Other semesters we we do we, we might have put like a lot of stuff and just commented it out and moved on. And those were things that I would definitely go and, and remove. If I never really did anything else with those with that commented code, I might as well delete it. If I'm not going to do anything with it, I should delete it. And I've got the backup in the other folder to bring the code back if I really want to bring it back. So what you said about the decompiling or something, if I put a package up? Yeah, in so theory... You can, you can reverse engineer. Yes, to some degree. There are tools out there that can take a finished APK and uncompile it to, to some degree. And um, people could try to see what your code was before it got compiled with anything, not just Android apps, you know, iOS apps, everything. I used to do a lot of, a lot of work also uh, on Adobe Flash, and that uses ActionScript to do interactivity. ActionScript is related to JavaScript. It's the same ExmaScript family, and it was very popular to try to find a, a Flash file decompiler to try to see what was their ActionScript code so that you know, to either break into it or to figure out how did they do that. So there's decompilers for just about everything. So that's the only thing I guess really on the index file that needs to be changed. Uh, in my case, there were some things that I that I didn't quite finish. You know, I've still got these to say item one. Obviously, I want to set those properly if I wanted to release this for real. Let's take a look at our CSS file. Let's look at index. What did we call it? The mystyles.css file. Let's open in Notepad, mystyles.css. I, I have a line here about the about paragraphs centering. I guess since it's commented out, we never ended up using it. There's a few few bytes there that can be saved by removing. So I had a comment block of code that I don't really need anymore. I deleted it. And the very, very, very first line that looks now like an amateur's line, so you might want to remove that one. One thing you can also do if, if, for example, the app gets reverse engineered, what you could do is have uh, some information here at the end, such as developer app description. This is all arbitrary what you put here. Date. You know, you put a little bit of a note here in your code, you could do that in the CSS file, in the JavaScript file, in the HTML file, and, you know, your info is here. So some sort of credit, you could do that. Uh, I could copy that and paste it as is into the JavaScript file. Obviously, I need the uh, HTML comment, and I'm going to put this into the HTML file. So if your CSS file looks fine, we'll save that, and then we'll go over to the JavaScript file, index.js.
So at the end of my JavaScript file, I would do the same thing. If you put the same block of code in the uh, HTML file, remember the comment tag in HTML is different. Because it's HTML, you should put it before the end of HTML tag. So I just copied the same little piece of code and I put it in all three of my files as a sort of credit to myself. Optional, of course, but that's... Uh, giving yourself credit. Now this is including comments and spaces and all of that, but my HTML file plus my CSS file plus my JavaScript file simply in lines of code, mine added up to 757 lines of code. So we wrote you know, 700 lines of code or so in, uh, in this project, um, mostly from scratch. And in terms, of, in terms of time, also in this class, right, seven hours a week for about, uh, how many, 16 weeks or something? So we had uh, about like 28 weeks, we had uh, 28 hours. Like 28, what are we, like, it was like 90, 88 hours or something. So if we do the math, almost about 90 hours or so of, of work that we've put into this. The very last thing would be to check your config XML file. At the root of your project, config XML, this is where if you'd like to, you can change these versions of, for example, the apps, the apps date right there. If you have not published your app, I haven't published it, I don't think anyone has, we would keep version code as one. But if you're going to upload a new version of the app to Amazon, that would need to be two. Every new version of your code that you're going to upload to publish needs a higher number there. Two, three, four, ninety-nine, a hundred. This version number here, that's arbitrary, that it's somewhat ignored. What matters is that you have increased that number. I don't need to increase it because I have not published a version at the App Store yet. If I do publish, then I have to increase that. And I will put here this date. That's what I would do for a final check of the project. Then we would do the Cordova 
build release using the JKS file. And then that final APK version is what I would upload to the app stores and, and publish for real. That part is optional, but it might be nice as a sort of proof of what you've done in the class. If you do upload a version of this project up to the app stores, uh, as you're seeing, I'm making this all up. I'm putting in a fake ID, and, and I've got a fake account on Amazon and all of that, and most students that take the class before have done that. And you are able to see uh, people's uh, apps from previous semesters. So if you want your app to show up, um, you can upload it and publish it on Amazon. We'll take a break and then we'll talk about, okay, well, if we've conquered the Android version, there's still the iOS version. We'll talk a little bit about that too. So let's take a break. Uh, it's 8.05. We'll be back at 8.15. We'll cover that a little bit. Be with you one moment. There's some more.